Hey guys, welcome to Tech Notebook. In this video, we will be comparing the new Raspberry Pi Pico with the Raspberry Pi Zero W. So, let's get started. So first off, the main distinction I want to make between these two is the device type. While they're both Raspberry Pis on the surface, one is a computer, while the other is a microcontroller. At this point, you've probably used or at least heard of a Raspberry Pi. Its main selling point is that it is a computer that is the size of a credit card, and it can do a variety of things. It can be a VPN server, a web server, a home automation bridge, and much more. The Pi Pico just can't do these things. So before you say, who's going to buy a Pi Pico then? Let's address what a microcontroller is and what it can be used for. So a microcontroller is a drastically simplified computer. It doesn't have a desktop, it doesn't have USB inputs for your mouse and keyboard, and it doesn't run an operating system. Its job is to run one program at a time. These microcontrollers are useful for repeated tasks, such as pulling a sensor or flashing a light. A microcontroller is actually faster at performing simple tasks since it doesn't have an operating system slowing it down. But the Raspberry Pi Zero W is better at complex tasks since it has a better processor, which I will go over in a bit. So now let's go over the specs of each device. The Raspberry Pi Zero W has a 1 GHz single core ARM CPU. The Pi Pico, on the other hand, has the RP2040, which was designed by the Raspberry Pi Foundation in house. This processor has a clock speed of 133 MHz. While the Pico's processor seems a bit slow on paper, when you consider that it is only running one script, it is actually extremely fast when running simple programs, as I mentioned before. The Raspberry Pi Zero W has 512 megabytes of RAM and uses an SD card for storage, while the Raspberry Pi Pico has 264 kilobytes of memory and storage. This number for the Raspberry Pi Pico seems small compared to the Raspberry Pi Zero, but remember that the Pi Pico only needs to store the program that it needs to run, as well as the firmware that it runs, so 264 kilobytes is more than enough for that. If you're enjoying this video so far, please consider subscribing. Currently, 97% of my viewers aren't subscribed, and it would mean the world to me if you just tap that subscribe button. Anyway, let's get on with the video. The Raspberry Pi Zero has a micro USB port for power and data. It also has HDMI, a camera input, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi. The Pi Pico, on the other hand, only has one USB port in order to connect it to a computer. This, in my opinion, is one of the Pico's greatest pitfalls. So, for projects such as home automation, I use the Node MCU ESP8266 since it features Wi-Fi. But for tasks that don't require Wi-Fi, the Pi Pico is a solid alternative. This topic is a bit more subjective than the other ones, so let me just show you how to make a basic Hello World program on each one, and I will be setting both Pies up from scratch. So first, to set up the Pico, we'll need to plug it in, and before we plug it into the computer, you'll need to hold the Boot Select button down, and the File Manager will pop up on our computer. Then we will need to go download the UF2 file, which is a firmware for the Raspberry Pi, from raspberrypi.org, uh, the next step is to drag the UF2 file onto the Pi Pico folder, and then the Pi will proceed to eject the drive and reboot. And finally, we'll need to open the IDE and write our code. So that was pretty simple. So now let's go over to the Raspberry Pi Zero W. The first thing we need to do is to plug the SD card into the computer. Then we need to download the Raspberry Pi OS image from the raspberrypi.org website unzip the files and flash them onto the SD card. We'll need to load on the Wi-Fi supplicant and the SSH in order to use it with the computer. Then we will need to plug the Raspberry Pi into a power source and insert the SD card. Then we need to connect to the Raspberry Pi using SSH. And finally, we need to write and run the code. So overall, it was much faster and easier to set up and write code on the Pi Pico. The Pi Zero 
took an extremely long time to do the same thing. There were large files and things took a while to complete. But considering that most of the time the Raspberry Pis are set up, I would say that both are easy and quick to set up and use. So the Raspberry Pi Pico sells on the official Raspberry Pi website for $4, which is reasonable for such a microcontroller. But I was able to get this board at Micro Center for $3. The Pi Zero W sells on Raspberry Pi's website for $10, so it is considerably more expensive. So what should you buy then? Well, it depends on your budget and what you're going to do with it. If you're doing intensive tasks, such as running a server, I would recommend a Pi Zero. But if you're just starting out and want a place to learn Python and code in the easiest way possible, I would recommend the Pi Pico since it is cheaper and it's just easier to set up. So with that, I'm going to wrap up the video. Let me know which board you prefer in the description below. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next video.